Picture this, a towering bipedal creature glimpsed under the moonlight, its silhouette a chilling blend of human and canine. Are these spine-tingling reports of the Michigan Dogman mere local legends, or do they echo something far older, far more unsettling? Our insatiable curiosity for the unknown has birthed countless captivating creatures throughout history. Among these enigmatic beings, the Cynocephali, or dog-headed people, boast a rich legacy that spans cultures and eras. Their presence in both medieval manuscripts and modern pop culture, from cryptozoological figures like the Michigan Dogman to fantastical novels and films, underscores their enduring appeal and mystery. The Cynocephali have captured human imagination since time immemorial, Take, for instance, a particularly striking depiction from the Nuremberg Chronicle written in 1493, one of the earliest illustrated world histories. This fascinating image of a cynocephalus exemplifies the era's fascination with the monstrous and unknown, blending mythical attributes with the human form. It's a vivid testament to how the Middle Ages grappled with fantastical beings, often merging observation with myth to explain the world. Even further afield, we encounter creatures strikingly similar to the Dogman of modern lore. The Amarok, a colossal wolf of Inuit mythology, is said to be far larger than its natural kin and hunts alone, a monstrous terror of the frozen wilderness. Notably, Danish scholar Hinrik Johannes Rink documented in the 19th century that the Greenlandic Inuit reserved the word Amarok exclusively for this legendary beast. These tales hint at a deeper, more primal fascination with the fusion of human and canine that transcends geographical and cultural boundaries. Deadnet Studios delves headfirst into the captivating world of the Cynocephali in this comprehensive exploration. Join us on a thrilling journey through time and across continents as we trace the origins of these enigmatic beings, dissect the diverse accounts of their existence, and untangle the intricate web of symbolism woven around them. From the sun-scorched plateaus of ancient Libya, where rock carvings depict dog-headed beings hunting alongside humans, to the mist-shrouded forests of medieval Europe, where travelers spun tales of savage, flesh-eating warriors, we'll leave no stone unturned in our quest to unravel the mystery of the Cynocephala. We'll delve into the detailed descriptions provided by Greek physician Catesius in the 5th century BC, follow in the footsteps of legendary figures like Alexander the Great, who supposedly encountered these remarkable creatures during his conquests and confront the terrifying Soglov of Slavic mythology, a demonic entity with a dog's head and a taste for human flesh. As we navigate the complex interplay between myth, legend, and reality, we'll explore the Cynocephali's multifaceted symbolism, from their role as representations of the other to their connections with ancient deities. We'll consider the psychological and cultural impact of these fascinating human-canine hybrids so, dear viewers, prepare to have your beliefs challenged, your imagination ignited, and your understanding of the world forever altered as we embark on this thrilling exploration of the enigmatic Cynocephala. Welcome to Deadnet Studios' comprehensive guide to the Dogman. The Cynocephali have captured human imagination since time immemorial, with some of the earliest known depictions dating back nearly 4,000 years. In the remote, sun-scorched plateaus of ancient Libya, Rock carvings etched into the stone cliffs and boulders reveal a tantalizing world where dog-headed beings walked alongside humans. These ancient petroglyphs showcase cynocephali engaged in various activities from hunting mighty beasts like the rhinoceros to carrying their young, hinting at a complex society and culture. Fast forward to the 5th century BC and we find the Greek physician Catesius providing one of the most detailed accounts of the cynocephali in his treatise, Indica. Having spent years at the Persian court, Catesius claimed to have gleaned his knowledge from the tales of travelers and explorers who ventured into the farthest reaches of the known world. He described a vast civilization of roughly 120,000 dog-headed beings inhabiting the remote mountains of India. These swarthy creatures, he wrote, had long hairy tails and communicated through a language of barks and growls, yet possessed a keen intelligence and sense of justice. Theseus's vivid descriptions paint a picture of a sophisticated society, with the Cynocephali engaging in shepherding, crafting intricate textiles, and even trading precious gems and dyes with the neighboring Indian kingdoms. He marveled at their longevity, claiming they could live up to 200 years, and noted their formidable skills as hunters and warriors, able to overtake their prey with ease and defeat any enemy in battle. Other ancient Greek accounts further contribute to the lore of the Cynocephala, 
Herodotus, the famed historian, spoke of dog-headed beings inhabiting the mountains of eastern Libya, while Claudius Elian, in his work on the characteristics of animals, described them as upright, gentle creatures who subsisted on a diet of wild game and dairy from their herds. Elian also noted their intelligence, remarking on their ability to skillfully crack open nuts and their appreciation for well-seasoned food and wine. Perhaps one of the most intriguing tales comes from none other than Alexander the Great himself. In a letter to his tutor, the legendary philosopher Aristotle, Alexander claimed to have encountered fierce, snarling, dog-headed warriors during his Indian campaign. He even boasted of capturing a few, a testament to his prowess as a conqueror and the Cynocephalies' reputation as formidable adversaries. These ancient accounts, steeped in myth and wonder, lay the foundation for the enduring fascination with the Cynocephala. They offer a window into a world where the boundaries between human and beast were blurred, and the exotic and unknown lurked just beyond the horizon. As we delve deeper into the history of these enigmatic beings, we'll uncover how these early tales evolved and shaped the legends, the echoes of which still haunt us to this day. From the misty forests and craggy mountains of the Balkans, whispers of a terrifying creature echo through centuries. The Soglav, a demonic entity with the body of a human and the head of a dog, stalks the pages of Slavic folklore, striking fear into the hearts of all who encounter it. According to legend, the Soglav is a grotesque being, its singular eye glinting with malevolence from the center of its forehead. Its maw, filled with iron teeth, is ever hungry for human flesh as it roams the shadowy realms of its domain. The Soglav is said to inhabit dark, dank places, gloomy caves, treacherous swamps, and impenetrable forests, where it lies in wait for unwitting travelers and lost souls. The origins of the Soglav are shrouded in mystery, but some tales suggest they are the spawn of a powerful witch who dared to merge the essence of human and beast. Others whisper that they are the cursed remnants of an ancient, forgotten race, doomed to wander the earth as abominations. Regardless of their genesis, the Soglav is universally feared and reviled, a symbol of the savage, untamed wilderness that lurks just beyond the boundaries of civilization. In the folktales of the South Slavs, the Soglav is often portrayed as a bloodthirsty cannibal, prowling graveyards and battlefields in search of fresh carrion. Its insatiable appetite for human flesh is the stuff of nightmares, and many a cautionary tale has been spun around the flickering fires of Balkan hearths, warning children of the grim fate that awaits those who stray too far into the wild. Yet the Soglav is more than a mere monster. It is a symbol of the primal fears that lurk within the human psyche. Its dual nature, both human and beast, reflects the struggle between our civilized veneer and the untamed animal within. The Soglav's solitary eye, ever watchful and all-seeing, is a reminder of the inescapable gaze of fate and the cyclical nature of life and death. The Soglav has left an indelible mark on Slavic literature and art, its grotesque visage captured in countless folktales, poems, and illustrations. From the haunting verses of Serbian epic poetry to the disturbing imagery of Balkan artists, the Soglav has become an iconic figure, embodying the dark, primordial forces that shape the Slavic cultural landscape. In modern times, the Soglav has undergone a metamorphosis, its legend adapting to the changing world. It has found new life in contemporary literature, film, and video games, its enduring appeal a testament to the timeless power of myth and the human fascination with the monstrous. Whether as a metaphor for the struggle between good and evil, or as a reflection of our own inner demons, the Soglav remains an enduring symbol of the shadows that lurk at the edges of our consciousness. As we continue our journey through the annals of Sinocephalic lore, the Soglav stands as a grim sentinel, guarding the threshold between the known and the unknown. Its haunting presence reminds us of the enduring power of myth and the eternal dance between light and darkness that defines the human experience. As Christianity spread across the ancient world, it encountered a rich tapestry of pre-existing myths and legends. Among these were the Cynocephali, whose presence in religious iconography and hagiography reveals a complex relationship between the early church and the notion of the monstrous. Perhaps the most famous example of a Cynocephalus in Christian tradition is St. Christopher. According to medieval legends, St. Christopher was originally a fearsome dog-headed warrior from a tribe of Cynocephali, known for their savagery and cannibalism. The story goes that Christopher, whose original name was Reprobus, meaning scoundrel or reprobate, was captured by the Roman army during the reign of Emperor Decius. 
Impressed by his immense strength and fierce loyalty, the Romans pressed Christopher into service, hoping to harness his brute power for their own ends. However, a fateful encounter with a holy hermit set Christopher on a different path. The hermit, recognizing the spark of divinity within the monstrous warrior, began to teach him the ways of Christianity. As Christopher learned the tenets of the faith, a miraculous transformation began to occur. His bestial features slowly melted away, replaced by the countenance of a man. His once savage heart was filled with compassion and devotion, and he embraced his new identity as a follower of Christ. Christopher went on to become a great martyr, using his strength to carry travelers safely across a treacherous river, until he was finally put to death for his unwavering faith. The story of St. Christopher's conversion and martyrdom became a powerful symbol of Christianity's ability to tame the wild and redeem the monstrous. It offered hope to those who felt trapped by their own sinful natures, promising that even the most savage beast could find salvation through faith. However, the depiction of St. Christopher as a cynocephalus was not without controversy, as the Church sought to distance itself from pagan influences and establish a more orthodox iconography. The image of the dog-headed saint began to fall out of favor. In some cases, the cynocephalic features were reinterpreted as a representation of Christopher's foreign or barbaric origins, rather than a literal depiction of his appearance. Despite these efforts, the association between cynocephali and the edges of the Christian world persisted. In medieval art and literature, dog-headed beings were often used to represent the pagan, the heretic, and the infidel. They served as a visual shorthand for the exotic and the unknown, a reminder of the strange and sometimes threatening cultures that lay beyond the borders of Christendom. This tendency to demonize the other through the lens of the monstrous extended to other religious and ethnic groups as well. In some medieval depictions, Jews and Muslims were portrayed with the heads of dogs, a dehumanizing trope that reflected the deep-seated prejudices of the time. These images served to reinforce the idea of Christian superiority and justify the often violent suppression of religious minorities. As we reflect on the complex history of the Cynocephali in Christian traditions, we are reminded of the enduring power of myth to shape our understanding of the world and our place within it. The story of St. Christopher and all its permutations stands as a testament to the transformative power of faith and the resilience of the human spirit in the face of the unknown. At the same time, the darker aspects of this history serve as a cautionary tale urging us to confront our own prejudices and to see the divine spark in all beings, regardless of their outward appearance or cultural origins. As the borders of the known world expanded during the Middle Ages, intrepid travelers ventured forth into uncharted territories, bringing back tales of wonder and terror from the far reaches of the earth. Among the marvels they described were the cynocephali, dog-headed beings who captured the imagination of medieval Europe. One of the most famous accounts comes from the Venetian explorer Marco Polo, whose epic journey along the Silk Road took him deep into the heart of Asia. In his seminal work, The Travels of Marco Polo, he describes encountering a race of dog-headed barbarians on the island of Anga Manain, thought to be the modern-day Andaman Islands in the Bay of Bengal. According to Polo, these beings were tall and stout, but very ugly, for they all have heads like big mastiff dogs. He portrays them as fierce and primitive, living as hunter-gatherers and subsisting on a diet of raw meat and wild fruits. Most chillingly, he accuses them of practicing cannibalism, claiming that when they capture an enemy as long as he is not one of their own race, they will cut his throat and drink the blood and eat the flesh. Polo's account, while undoubtedly embellished for dramatic effect, reflects the prevailing attitudes of his time toward the exotic and the unknown. The cynocephali, in his telling, become a symbol of the savage, the uncivilized and the irredeemably other. Yet Polo was far from the only medieval traveler to claim encounters with dog-headed beings. The Franciscan friar Giovanni da Pian del Carpine, who journeyed to the court of the Mongol Khan in the 13th century, wrote of a fierce battle between the Khan's army and a tribe of cynocephali near the shores of Lake Baikal in Siberia. According to Giovanni, these creatures fought with savage ferocity, barking and howling like dogs, as they clashed with the Mongol warriors. Similarly, the 14th century English explorer Sir John Mandeville, whose travels became a bestseller of its day, regaled his readers with tales of dog-headed tribes in the far-off lands of Ethiopia and the Nicobar Islands. Like Polo, he portrays them as primitive and brutish, living in caves and hunting with rudimentary weapons. As these tales spread throughout Europe, 
they became woven into the broader tapestry of medieval mythology, blurring the lines between fact and fantasy. The Cynocephali became a fixture of maps and bestiaries, their image a potent symbol of the monstrous races that lurked beyond the edges of the known world. Yet even as they were feared and reviled, the Cynocephali also exerted a strange fascination over the medieval mind. Their very existence challenged the boundaries of what it meant to be human, raising profound questions about the nature of the soul and the limits of God's creation. Some theologians, like the 9th century scholar Retramnus of Corby, argued that the Cynocephali possessed rational souls and were therefore capable of salvation through Christ. Others, however, saw them as irredeemable beasts, forever beyond the pale of Christian civilization. As the age of exploration dawned and the boundaries of the known world expanded ever further, the Cynocephali began to recede into the realm of myth and legend. Yet their impact on the medieval imagination remained profound, a testament to the enduring power of the monstrous to both terrify and captivate. Today, as we look back on these tales through the lens of modern scholarship, we can see them for what they are, a reflection of the hopes, fears, and prejudices of a world still struggling to come to terms with the vast diversity of the human experience. In the figure of the Cynocephalus, we find a mirror held up to the darkest corners of the medieval psyche, a reminder of the long and often painful journey toward understanding and acceptance that lies at the heart of the human story. Here's how we can revise the existing theories and interpretations segment to center on the idea that Cynocephali dogmen are real, undiscovered beings the enduring fascination with the enigmatic Cynocephali hints at something far more profound than mere monsters or folklore. What if these beings, dismissed as mythical, point to a hidden reality? A world where the line between human and animal is not as clear-cut as we once believed. Throughout history, whispers of dog-headed people have echoed across continents and eras. Could these accounts be more than just misinterpretations or cultural anxieties? While tales of the other and symbolic manifestations of the psyche have their place, the sheer volume and consistency of Cynocephali lore suggests something more tangible. Consider the vastness of our planet and the continual discovery of new species. Isn't it conceivable that a reclusive, intelligent hominid with canine features could remain hidden in the remote corners of the globe? Descriptions of their size, strength, and elusive nature align uncannily with modern-day dogman reports lending credence to the possibility of a living link between these figures of lore and contemporary sightings. Ancient explorers, venturing into uncharted territories, may have encountered these beings firsthand. Cultural differences and a lack of a scientific framework could have led to descriptions emphasizing the creature's otherness, solidifying the monstrous image of the Cynocephalus within the Western consciousness. The idea of a human-canine hybrid while challenging our understanding of evolution taps into a deep fascination with our connection to the animal world. Perhaps the Cynocephali, dismissed as fantasy, are a distorted reflection of an undiscovered species, a testament to the vast mystery still held within the natural world. Could the Cynocephali, long relegated to the realm of myth, also represent a psychological truth? The shadow archetype, symbolizing our untamed instincts, takes literal form in these creatures. By confronting them, we examine our own complex nature and the struggle between our civilized selves and the primal forces within. In this sense, the Cynocephali become both a potential biological reality and a potent metaphor for the hidden depths of the human psyche. Let us not dismiss the rich lore of the Cynocephali too hastily, for within these tales may lie clues to an extraordinary truth, that we share this world with beings far stranger and more wondrous than we ever dared imagine. The Cynocephali challenge us to reconsider the boundaries of possibility and unlock the secrets that may be hiding in plain sight. The echoes of the Cynocephali continue to reverberate through modern times, their presence felt in various forms, from cryptozoological sightings to popular culture depictions. These enduring tales and encounters suggest that the dog-headed beings may be more than mere legends, hinting at a reality that has yet to be fully understood. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Cynocephali's modern legacy is the string of reported sightings across the American continent. From the Michigan Dogman to the Beast of Bray Road in Wisconsin to the Amarok folklore of Canada, accounts of large, bipedal canine creatures have persisted, often accompanied by a sense of unease and fear. Eyewitnesses describe these beings as having a mix of human and canine features, with powerful muscular bodies and eerily intelligent eyes. 
Some reports even mention the creature's ability to walk upright, adding to their unsettling human-like qualities. The lingering scent of wet fur and a guttural low growl accompany many of these encounters. These sightings, while often met with skepticism, bear an uncanny resemblance to the ancient tales of the Cynocephali, raising questions about the true nature of these elusive beings. The Land Between the Lakes incident in Kentucky, with its detailed witness accounts and alleged physical evidence, stands out as a particularly compelling case. Beyond the realm of cryptozoology, the Cynocephali have also left their mark on modern popular culture. From literature to film and television, the image of the dog-headed human has been reimagined and reinterpreted countless times. In the world of horror and fantasy, the Cynocephali often appear as terrifying monsters, their bestial nature amplified to strike fear into the hearts of audiences. Films like The Howling and Dog Soldiers have capitalized on the primal terror associated with the idea of a human-canine hybrid, tapping into deep-seated fears and anxieties. Yet not all modern depictions of the Cynocephali are rooted in horror. Some works, such as Neil Gaiman's American Gods, have explored the mythological and spiritual aspects of these beings, presenting them as powerful and ancient entities that walk among us, hidden in plain sight. Perhaps less intensely, some comedic takes on the subject treat them as oddly relatable suburban figures, highlighting the potential for a gentler, more complex picture. The Cynocephali have also found their way into the realm of science fiction, with writers and artists imagining futures where genetic engineering or alien hybridization has given rise to new forms of human-animal chimeras. These speculative works challenge us to consider the boundaries of what it means to be human and the potential consequences of blurring the lines between species. Perhaps one of the most enduring aspects of the Cynocephali's modern legacy is their connection to the werewolf mythos. While distinct from the traditional shape-shifting werewolf, the Cynocephali share many of the same themes and motifs, the blending of human and animal, the fear of the bestial within, and the idea of a hidden primal nature lurking beneath the surface of civilization. The fascination with werewolves and other human-canine hybrids in modern popular culture may be seen as a reflection of our ongoing struggle to come to terms with our own animalistic impulses and the darker aspects of our nature. In this sense, the Cynocephali and their werewolf kin serve as potent symbols of the human condition, reminding us of the complex and often contradictory forces that shape our existence. As we navigate the uncharted territories of the 21st century, the Cynocephali continue to haunt the edges of our collective consciousness, whether as cryptozoological curiosities, figures of horror and fantasy, or metaphors for the human experience. These enigmatic beings refuse to be relegated to the dustbin of history. Instead, they endure as a testament to the enduring power of myth and the human imagination, inviting us to question the nature of reality and the limits of what we consider possible as we continue to explore the world around us and the depths of our own psyche. The Cynocephali will undoubtedly remain a source of fascination, fear, and wonder for generations to come. As we come to the end of our exploration of the Cynocephali, it becomes clear that these enigmatic beings are far more than mere footnotes in the annals of history. From ancient rock carvings to modern-day sightings, the dogmen have left an indelible mark on our collective consciousness, challenging our assumptions about the nature of reality and our place within it. The Cynocephali have served as a canvas upon which we have projected our deepest fears, our most fervent hopes, and our unceasing curiosity about the world around us. They have been cast as monsters and saints, savages and sages, reflecting the complex and often contradictory attitudes that have shaped human culture throughout the ages. In many ways, the story of the Cynocephali is the story of humanity itself, a tale of exploration and discovery, of the struggle to understand the unknown and to come to terms with the other. From the earliest travelers who ventured into uncharted lands to the modern-day cryptozoologists who seek evidence of their existence, the Cynocephali have been a constant companion on our journey of self-discovery. Yet the true significance of the Cynocephali may lie not in their physical reality, but in their symbolic and metaphorical power. As representations of the liminal space between the human and the animal, the civilized and the wild, they remind us of the fundamental duality that lies at the heart of our existence. In confronting the Cynocephali, whether through myth, legend, or personal experience, we are forced to confront the shadow side of our own nature, the primal, untamed aspects of ourselves that we seek to suppress or deny. By engaging with these aspects of our psyche, we gain a deeper understanding of what it means to be human, 
and of the complex interplay between our instincts and our higher faculties. At the same time, the enduring mystery of the Cynocephali serves as a reminder of the vast and uncharted territories that still exist within the realm of human knowledge. Despite our scientific and technological advancements, there is still so much about our world and ourselves that remains unknown, waiting to be discovered and understood. Perhaps the whispers of dogmen and the fleeting glimpses of unidentified lights in the sky hint at a reality far stranger than we dare imagine, veiled by secrecy and obscured by time. In this sense, the Cynocephali are not just relics of a bygone age, but living symbols of the ongoing quest for truth and understanding that lies at the heart of the human experience. They beckon us to keep exploring, to keep questioning, and to never lose sight of the wonders and mysteries that surround us. As we move forward into an uncertain future, let us take inspiration from the enduring legacy of the Cynocephali. Let us embrace the unknown, the uncanny and the other, recognizing them not as threats to be feared, but as opportunities for growth, discovery and transformation. For in the end, the Cynocephali are not just creatures of myth and legend, but reflections of our own deepest nature. By understanding them, we come closer to understanding ourselves and to unlocking the full potential of what it means to be human. At DeadNet Studios, we are committed to continuing this exploration, delving deeper into the mysteries that surround the Cynocephali and the myriad other strange and wondrous phenomena that populate our world. We invite you, our viewers, to join us on this journey to share your own experiences, insights, and theories, and to help us build a community dedicated to the pursuit of truth and understanding. If you have been captivated by the story of the Cynocephali, and if you are ready to embark on a journey of discovery that will challenge your assumptions and expand your horizons, we encourage you to like this video and subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you will become an integral part of the DeadNet Studios community, and you will have access to a wealth of exclusive content, behind-the-scenes glimpses, and opportunities for engagement and collaboration. So let us continue to explore the world around us and the depths of our own psyche, armed with the knowledge and wisdom of those who have gone before us. Let us follow in the footsteps of the travelers, the explorers, and the visionaries who have dared to confront the unknown and to seek out the truth, no matter where it may lead. And let us never forget the enduring power of myth, legend, and imagination to shape our understanding of the world and our place within it. For in the end, it is through these lenses that we come to see ourselves and our reality most clearly and to chart a course towards a brighter and more enlightened future. Let the echoes of the dogmen linger in our minds, a haunting melody that forever compels us to seek the answers hidden at the edge of the known. In the shadows of the digital night, we've wandered far and seen success. From haunting tales to eerie lights, to